As an investor, you are always looking for undervalued stocks, which means those stocks could trade at a price below their intrinsic value. Sometimes the stock market could be overvalued and you can't figure it out. Today, we are here to help you with that. Welcome to Fix Your Finances, Build Financial Wealth. If you want to build your financial wealth and fill your mind with the right information, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for us to provide you with more valuable content. So without any more waiting, let's talk about the overvalued market, shall we? You might think the whole stock market game is only meant for people with higher IQ, but that simply is not the case. The stock market can be overvalued at times, and yes, for someone who just started out in the stock market, it can be confusing. There are so many ways to understand the overvaluation of the stock market, and it is important that you know them all to have a clear idea about the whole thing. You have to look for the stock's intrinsic value to see if it is overvalued or not. Now a stock's intrinsic value is usually the perceived value that could be different from the current market offering, and it is this value that shows the actual amount of the asset. A stock is overvalued when the shares trade at a higher value than its intrinsic price. Intrinsic value is the original value of the company that depends on factors that are in the control of the company, and we can call them internal factors. Once you are aware of this, you can save a lot of money by choosing not to buy that stock at that particular time. Investing should not be done blindly, so it is very important for you to do your research on every stock that you are considering to invest, and also you need to be aware of the inflated or overvalued prices of stock so you can thank yourself later for making the right decisions. The other way to look at overvaluation is when the stock's current market price is just not justified by its earnings outlook or profit projection. There are so many factors that affect the stock prices of a company, and we would call them external factors. This includes rise and fall in demand of shares, market fluctuations, unfounded decisions made by investors, which inflates the prices of the stocks, and so on. You could also say the stock could be overvalued if a company faces any fundamental or financial crisis due to internal factors. There are several market experts who disagree with the concept of overvaluation or undervaluation of stocks. Still, investors like Warren Buffett and Benjamin Graham have employed the practice of value investing, that is, investing in overvalued or undervalued shares. When you are looking out for the overvaluation, there are a few parameters or variables that are thoroughly examined by value investors. These usually include a company's balance sheet, annual report, statement of income, and other related variables, which allows investors to form an idea of a company's operations, infrastructure, financial and managerial capacity, revenue model, etc. In order to develop a more substantial and concrete idea of what we discussed earlier, let's discuss them in detail now. 1. Price to Earnings Ratio Price to Earnings Ratio is the ratio between a company's per unit share prices and earnings per share received by shareholders. So how do you calculate that? Well, it would be share price per unit, earnings per share. Yes, that easy. To put things in perspective for you all, Let's say that the price to earnings ratio is 50. What this means to you is that a shareholder is supposed to pay $50 to earn $1 from that share. Let us give you another example. If the price of each share is XYZ company as mentioned in the stock market is $500, then you look at its earnings per share and find out that it is $10. Then the company's price to earnings ratio would be 500 divided by 10. That's 50. Analysis and investors usually consider stocks that have a price to earnings ratio of 50 or above to be an overvalued share, especially in comparison to a stock that has a ratio of 10 or below 10. What this means to a value investor is that the share prices of a company are considerably higher than what the company can afford to pay you as dividends. Given a company's historical earnings per share results, it could be easy for an investor to find an estimated price per share of a stock using the average of price to earnings ratios from some comparable companies. Moreover, viewing an actual price to earnings ratio of a company can also provide insight into the reasonability of the stock when compared to its peers. 2. Peg Ratio the problem with the price to earnings ratio is that it does not provide much detailed information about the company. 
which can compromise the accuracy of your decision making even though the price to earnings ratio is a credible determinant of overvalued stocks. So because of this, we have several investors and analysis that use the PEG ratio to determine the value of the stocks. It is an essential piece of data to many in the financial industry as it takes a company's earnings growth into account and tends to provide investors with a big picture view of profitability growth compared to the PE ratio. Now a question arises in your mind, what is this ratio and how do you calculate it? Well, it is nothing but the ratio between the expected growth rate of earnings per share in the following years minus the payable tax and the current price to earnings ratio. PEG ratio equals price to earnings ratio divided by growth of the company's earnings per share. Now let's say the company is also paying dividends, then investors use dividend adjusted PEG ratio divided by growth rate of EPS plus dividend paid. Financial experts mostly consider a PEG ratio below 2 to be the threshold, and if the ratio is anything above this, then we conclude that the stock is overvalued. So the key takeaway for you will be the lower the PEG's value, the more undervalued it is and vice versa. 3. Relative Percentage of Dividend Yield The relative percentage of dividend yield is the measurement of how well a company has performed in terms of dividend. This is done by drawing a comparison between its current dividend payouts. In the case of overvalued shares, dividend payouts are considerably lower than its history. What this means to you is that although the company's stocks have been valued substantially, its financial capacity is still very limited. Both value investors and market analysis derive such conclusions from the fact that even if a company is going through several cyclical fluctuations in the market or any fundamental changes with such a company, it is historically supposed to maintain a certain level of stability in its dividend payment. That being said, this method is handy for new investors, as it does not include any extensive data research that could confuse you. Still, it only involves the extraction of the company's dividend payment history. Investors like yourself should duly check the years where such a company has witnessed the dip in its dividend payment to conclude. 4. Spotting Cyclic Fluctuation this is key for investors as it helps to determine whether the stock market in specific and the economy in general would witness any significant cyclic fluctuations that could affect the prices of the stocks. What happens during these situations is that the stock prices of companies belonging to specific industries surges during economic expansion that will result in a rapid appreciation of capital, high dividends, etc. Stock market experts and market analysis refer to this phenomenon as a value trap where only economic expansion causes prices of stocks to grow because investors decide to purchase these stocks seeing a spike in stock prices. But later they get trapped as these prices tend to fall incredibly to a point where no one will be willing to purchase it. Now that you know how to determine overvalued stocks, you might be thinking about whether you should invest in overvalued stocks or not. Well, we've got you covered. If you think you are someone with considerable expertise over the stock market and you know what you are doing, then you can decide whether to invest in an overvalued stock or not. Why we say that is because if you have considerable expertise over the stock market, then you must be having profound knowledge and the chances are high that you can determine whether the stock is undervalued or not. Most of the time, inexperienced investors can struggle to curate, research and compute conclusive data which would allow them to make an informed decision. That being said, if you think that you don't have the expertise to make an informed decision, then you can also use the relative dividend yield percentage to decide whether a share is undervalued. Not just that, those individuals who already possess overvalued stocks prior to such inflation can also trade those during overvaluation to earn substantially high capital gains. It's often a mistake to part ways with the company's stock just because it might have gotten a bit pricey from time to time. Look at the returns of two businesses, Coca-Cola and PepsiCo. Even though the stock price has been overvalued at times, an investor would have been filled with regret later after selling off their stake. Identifying overvalued and undervalued stock will let the investor decide what to buy and sell, thereby realizing the true potential of every investment. So to conclude, it takes a little bit of experience and expertise to spot and base your bets on an overvalued stock. While going for such a stock, you have to ensure that you have analyzed the business properly for its fundamentals and growth potential. That being said, we have come to the end of the video. Let us know in the comments below what your thoughts on the market being overvalued. 
and make sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at fixyourfinances_. underscore. See you next time at Fix Your Finances.